this next matchup, Kovac and Liddy, 174. It was the big one we talked about, both ranked players. The only one for IU is Kovac, ranked number 25 in his weight class, up against number four in the nation, 21 and one, Dylan Liddy. Yes, and on paper, this seems like it should be a, a major advantage for the Boilermakers as Liddy is ranked much higher than Kovac. However, Kovac has a bit of that 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 Purdue hard-nosed, tough, tough wrestler uh, at aspect to him. And this is a match that I believe is going to be a the marquee matchup of the night as Kovac runs him out of bounds and gets a stall call. The Purdue coaching staff infuriated with that call. Quick start from Kovac. It's a bit of an edge. This is the kind of upset IU needs. Kovac is the star of this Hoosier squad. And what a star can do is win against anyone. And you should have an opportunity. Lighty here. Trying to work his way against and keep his side on top here. IU got it started strong with Rooks getting the opening upset win. But then two close fought victories for Purdue means that they now lead 6-3 and now it's Kovac's job to get an upset of his own against Lighty. Yes, Lighty, a very tough wrestler to score on. He gives up very few points in his matches. His only loss this year so far has been to Iowa's Michael Kemmerer, who's ranked third in the country right now. That was just last match too, so 21 match win streak for Lighty to open his season Really remarkable start, and he's such a confident and smart wrestler, as you're seeing so far in this feeling out process. It is a very big feeling out process. The first minute and 40 seconds, we haven't seen much action in comparison to the first three matches where the action came thick and fast early on. And as we get to the heavies, these guys are harder to get off the ground. They're going to be more tactical. It's going to be a little bit slower. Minute left here in this first period, still deadlocked 0 0 between Kovac and Lighty. It has been a, an extensive feeling out period. Two very talented wrestlers. And there, there, there's that sign of Lighty not really trying to take very many risks. He's going to pick and choose his opportunities, and when he does that, he's very fast and very efficient at, at finishing those offensive attempts and scoring points in those positions. So that's something that Kovac needs to be ready for. Yeah, he's so patient, it's almost frustrating because as an opponent, you just want to attack and you get tired of just feeling out and having some hand fights. But Kovac was at Wisconsin last year, qualified for the NCAAs, has the mind as well to do it. 10 seconds left here. Both. No both comfortable in up, upper body positions as they're throwing, throwing each other around with underhooks and overhooks. And that's gonna, the seconds are gonna tick off there. First period gone. Sammy, how are each player gonna look at that and try and adapt into the second and third period to try and get to this edge on the scoreboard? Well, I, I'm looking, looking to see both these wrestlers likely choose bottom to get their, their, their quote unquote free escape of, of the match and use that experience that they had wrestling each other in the first period to score an offensive attempt of their own from their feet as Lighty gets away in just six seconds at the start of the second period, giving himself a 1-0 advantage. Indeed, 1-0 advantage just very early on in the second period. Makovac will probably employ a similar tactic into the third, try and get that free escape point. Both very good defensive wrestlers. Kovac trying to use that underhook position to score, to sc shoot in on a single leg and get in very good position to score a takedown of his own. Kovac is a prime example of what head coach Angel Escobedo is trying to build for IU. Transferred back to his home state, the native of Merrillville, up in the region near Chicago. Talked about coming back, representing his home state, and being proud to wear the cream and crimson. That's what Angel Escobedo, who's an All-American here at IU, wants from his wrestlers as he tries to build a Big Ten contender in the best conference in wrestling in the country. It is incredibly difficult to get into what is such a talented conference. Escobedo, arguably one of the best wrestlers in IU history, a four-time All-American, the only one in program history, and was a 2008 NCAA champion himself, now leading this squad. 
Yeah, the Big Ten, they have the top five teams in the country right now in Iowa, Penn State, Ohio State, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. You cannot find any other Division One sport except maybe water polo with the Pac-12. I have not checked up on my water polo standings lately. But besides water polo, you cannot find any other sport in Division One that has one conference mm -hmm. that dominant in one sport. It's really remarkable, and it's really difficult for a team like IU who's trying to build and have some competitive matches, but they're playing the top, re they're wrestling against the top wrestlers in the country day in and day out. Exactly, Kovach getting in that defensive position. As you mentioned, Sammy, get that escape point. What's going to be the key, if he can get the escape point, assuming that, what's going to be the key in the final two minutes for either guy to try and get the edge? Well, the, last bit. the best the best time to, to score a takedown uh, going from an escape is immediately, as you saw, uh, at, in the 165-pound match, Hoy got an escape and shot immediately in on Webster's legs. Obviously, the takedown didn't uh, uh, give up any any points any points for uh, in, in favor of Hoy, but he was able to get in on the legs and get into an offensive position, and that's something that Kovac can do here. If he gets an escape, immediately shoot in on Lighty. Don't give him any time to breathe. Don't give him any time to think about what the next move is. You know, he's got to be able to dictate this match from here on out. 1-1 one, one now. And it's going to be... We're not going to opt for that quick process. Lighty kind of cutting him loose to try and go back into this neutral position and try and get that last takedown, that could be crucial. Minute 20 left in what we talked about before the match that could be one of the biggest ones in determining the overall duel result. Both guys can have a lot of weight on their shoulders. Kovac trying to live up to the occasion by Centennial against Purdue. Not much bigger than that for a regular season dual meet. A great crowd here, too. This has to be close to setting the record for Wilkinson Hall for a wrestling match. It was 1,962 fans they had last year when IU placed number one Penn State. Has to be around that number. Three of the sides of the stands here in this rectangle that is Wilkinson Hall are nearly totally full. 38 seconds for either guy to try and get an edge and this can be this can be the time where that that stall call starts to come into play. You can see Kovac making a lot of offensive attempts here, and that could that that's uh, a, a numerous offensive attempts without the other opponent making an offensive attempt of their own mm -hmm. can lead towards another stall call, which could give Kovac a two-one advantage, which would be enough to win the match. Would be huge in the final few seconds here. Riding time not much of a factor. Only nine seconds in favor of Lighty. And you see Lighty glance over at the clock and they see that it's going to go into sudden victory for the second time here today. And this is this is where where Lighty's been able to play his play play a lot of his matches like like a chess game. He's being very tactical with it. He's not he's not giving up any anything. And you can see him being offensive right off the bat as we go into the sudden victory period. Big big matchup here and it's a minute of sudden victory if no one gets any points we would go to a second overtime Lighty in on a single leg here he's got to elevate he's got Kovac in a lot of danger as he collects the other leg and scores and a two-point takedown nice right there from Lighty and it just shows the margins that are in these close matchups finally gets one edge and is able to bring him down to give Purdue now a 9-3 edge here today